Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a cracking video. We're going to cover every act and every scene of Macbeth, looking at what happens in each one, key quotes from each one. I'll try and put a bit of context into each one. Now, you might be wondering why there's a picture of an old retro game cartridge on the screen with me. And the reason is I'm very excited to present to you a study guide that I'm releasing completely for free. I'm going to go through that with you, but you can download this in the description as well. And I'm, I've am i basically created Macbeth as if it were a retro video game. I just think that the artwork looks really cool and it just makes revising for Macbeth and learning about it just, to me, a little bit more fun. So let's dive straight in. Okay, so now we're into Act 3. Act 3, Scene 1. Banquo suspects Macbeth and Macbeth arranges for Banquo and Fleance's murder. So it's interesting that he is now the king. He has the throne, he has the crown, he has all the things, right? But he's still not happy he's miserable and that leads us to the most important quote he talks about how on his head there is a fruitless crown and the metaphor of the fruitless crown suggests that he doesn't have you know any fruit which he's talking about children he hasn't got any children yeah so this shows that his this also links to that major theme of ambition he hasn't actually been able to he's been able to become king but he hasn't been able to secure a line of kings because he has no kids and we find out in this scene he says that he has a barren scepter and that imagery suggests that he's like infertile or impotent unable to have children so he's not happy he's the king but he's not able to have a line of kings and that also then sets up more enmity or like anger towards banquo because obviously banquo has a son called fleance and the witches prophesied that banquo was going to have a line of kings not macbeth act three scene two macbeth tells lady macbeth that they are not safe yet revealing his torment to her so lady macbeth is just trying to chill now she's like i'm queen i'm happy to just go to the beach have a few margaritas every day and just relax macbeth is not on that same level as her right now he's scared he's trying to kill banquo next he's trying to uphold the throne and then get the line of kings like we said and so there's a real division that starts happening between macbeth and lady macbeth at this point he comments to her oh full of scorpions is my mind dear wife the metaphor of the scorpions is meant to like be very unpleasant and show us that you know his mind is like just wriggling around full of anxiety and doubt and problems all the time and he's guilty and paranoid basically whereas lady macbeth is trying to get him to chill out and just enjoy being king and so he from now on he doesn't even really tell her about his plots to kill other people so if we go back to that horse imagery that i talked about when macbeth was saying i have no spur to prick the sides of my intent basically in the same way that a horse can be guided by a rider up to a certain point, right? The horse is now like galloping off on its own and it's crazy and lost control. Lady Macbeth has basically lost control of her husband at this point. Act three, scene three. This is the murder of Banquo. Banquo is murdered, but his, very importantly, his son Fleance escapes, which thwarts, I, th I like the word thwarts, basically ruins Macbeth's plan. The whole point of Macbeth trying to kill Banquo is he wanted to make sure that he killed not only Banquo but Banquo's son so he destroyed Banquo's line of kings because obviously if Banquo has no sons he can't have a line of kings but that hasn't happened Fleance has managed to run away I feel like that's Fleance just running off in the distance now while the others are fighting but yeah he's escaped and so Banquo can still have a line of kings little bonus context for you on that as well James the first would have seen Banquo as his ancestor like his granddad yeah and so when James I was watching this play, he'd have been really happy to see Fleance get away. He would have believed that he was descended from Banquo's line and blessed. And here's the major quote, fly good Fleon, fly, fly. What's interesting is in the same way that we had the owl imagery in the falcon, we still have kind of a link to the bird imagery with the word fly there as well. So maybe on some level symbolically, it's this idea that there's this other nest of birds that's going to take over from the Macbeth owls at some point in the future there's repetition in this quote obviously and we've got the major theme of fate and free will I'm just gonna ask you again like share sub if you're enjoying this content I'm really going for it for you guys I'm trying to give you lots of good knowledge as quick as I can and that's what my channel is all about I've got a bunch of courses as well on my website gcseenglishexperts.com so if you want to check any of my courses out or if you even want to submit work to me, I do essay marking as a service. 
so I've got a bunch of details on that and I can help you one-on-one -on -one if you need a bit of a boost for your GCSEs. Okay, Act 3, Scene 4. Macbeth sees Banquo's ghost at the banquet, unravelling his composure. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake here. I cut off half of Banquo's ghost's face, but you get the idea, I think. This is a really important scene because all of the thanes and ladies have gathered around, they're having a meal, they're trying to enjoy the new king, and yet unfortunately Banquo's ghost keeps ruining the banquet. So it creates a sense of chaos in the in the scene. And again, it links to like the broken chain of being in terms of context. Macbeth comments, it will have blood. They say blood will have blood. So the repetition and the foreboding of this line is this idea that Macbeth is catching up with the fact that at some point he's going to pay for his crimes and so is Lady Macbeth and so that then links to the major theme within the scene which is guilt and the development now not only of paranoia but starting to get into development of madness really. Act 3 scene 5 the witches meet with Hecate or Hecate comment down below whether you would pronounce it Hecate or maybe your teachers have told you one or the other I normally used to say Hecate and now I'm Hecate guy, I don't know. Anyway, Hecate, who is the goddess of witchcraft, tells the witches to keep deceiving Macbeth, and that then links to the major quote, which is that their deception of him is going to eventually mean that he puts his hopes above wisdom, grace, and fear. So that's the quote, and that is foreshadowing what's gonna come later. As the play continues, Macbeth, through that theme of deception, is going to become less and less wise, so he's gonna make more and more stupid decisions, less and less graceful, so he's gonna show less and less mercy on people, and less fear. So he's gonna, at the moment, he's still afraid to the point that he murders Banquo in secret, in the woods outside. He murders Duncan in the cover of darkness. He's gonna lose that sense of fear and eventually he's gonna start murdering people in broad daylight. So that's a really important quote from Act 3, Scene 5. Act 3, Scene 6. Lennox and a, another lord, we don't know what the other lord's name is, discuss Scotland's suffering under Macbeth's rule. At first, Lennox is really cautious about this, but eventually he becomes more and more bold to talk to the lord about this. And the lord says, our suffering country under a hand accursed. This is personification, the idea that Scotland is like a person being tormented and tortured by Macbeth because of him being accursed. That also then links to context, the idea that this, these lords are discussing maybe he doesn't have the divine right of kings, maybe he shouldn't be king after all. And so that starts to maybe fore, foreshadow the fact that eventually there's going to be uh, a rebellion, right? And that's the major theme. It's ty tyranny, which is Macbeth, obviously, and rebellion. They're starting to build confidence to rebel against Macbeth because he's such a bad king. If you want any uh, extra help, check out my website, gcseenglishexperts.com. I can help you one-to-one. -one. I can mark your essays. You can go into some of my more detailed courses. There's the YouTube shorts. There's the YouTube videos. For one final, like this video, subscribe, and share this with some of your mates who are also failing Macbeth. I will help you pass those exams, okay? All right, cheers. See you in the next one.